trouble with holidays is that for some reason it's compulsory to have fun. You're not allowed to be grumpy, tricky. Truth is, holidays are fraught with hassle. And because the point of them is to make you happy, they don't. Nothing's perfect enough. Some lounge of war is in full swing. Your bald patch needs attention. And the Germans get all the best rooms. You try to throw yourself into the holiday spirit. You find a gorgeous, peaceful, idyllic beach away from all the hustle and bustle at home and soak up the sun. But so do half a million other disgruntled holiday makers. Oh, the joys of the package deal. What were you thinking of? I remember when my wife and I were first married and we uh, said, let's go away, you know, somewhere nice. So we went to the travel agent and we said, where's warm at this time of year that we could go? And uh, he said, Lanzarote is really nice. And it's like water dripping from behind our ears. Oh, is it? Is Lanzarote really nice? Oh, yes, Lanzarote is lovely. Well, I can tell you, dear viewers, Lanzarote is not lovely. Lanzarote is like a car park sticking out of the sea, was what I felt when I went there. Or, you know, or some of these places like Tenerife, it's like Loughborough painted white. We went to Fuengarola, to my mate's mum and dad's flat. I don't know if people watching have any experience of Fuengarola. It's like... It's like kind of Gdansk in intense, boiling heat. It's like post-Second World War Poland after it had been flattened and rebuilt by Soviet architects with no idea of style. Okay, good afternoon everyone. I hope you all had a very good flight over to Las Palmas. Just like to give you a very warm welcome. My name's Kelly and I'm gonna be your holiday representative throughout your stay here. You try to remain optimistic, but the reps annoying you already being chirpy and cheerful, making out that the place is Mustique or the Bahamas. Looking out of the window, it looks more like a war zone. You get to the hotel, check in, and you can remain optimistic no longer. It's a bit dingy. I am a nightmare when I arrive in hotels because I'm very sort of looking around and making sure that everything is all right, and I never like the room I'm given. You'd arrive at a hotel... And you get to a room and I'd say to everybody, this is a terrific room, look at that sea, look at those cupboards. Wow, it's got a television set. I looked round and my wife wasn't there because she was down the corridor seeing that there was a better room. It's quite normal for me to move um, rooms several times in a hotel, um, but it's also normal for me on the same evening to move hotels. Hotels, you know, they never, ever, ever, ever look like they do in the brochure. Um, possibly because they're not actually the one in the brochure. Holiday hell basically is other people. You know, if the hotel could be empty or have only about 20 people in it, so, so it gives a slight view of life, that would be fine. Other people are the problem. OK, good morning, everyone. Let's try that one again. Good morning, everyone. Morning. That's better. OK, just like to give you all a very warm welcome on behalf of myself and the hotel management. Chirpy Chops is back the next day for the dreaded welcome meeting. It's worse than going to a pantomime. OK, just to let you know about a couple of things that we've got on in the hotel. On a Monday evening, we do have some events going on. At 7 o'clock, we've got our bingo. On and on she drones. Your holiday's ebbing away. The sun's going in. And you might as well be back in the office with the flip chart and pointy pens and presentation. She's telling you things you don't need to know. She's doing the big sale on a stupid Spanish night out for about 40 quid a pop. Included in this evening, you will have a buffet, which you'll be able to have your local curries, stroganoff, your chips, your salads, rice, everything you can imagine is there to be eaten. I have this theory that you should be respectful of other people's jobs and you don't want them to feel badly about themselves, but I don't really care what Sharon thinks I need to see in Mallorca. <laughs> come to the welcome meeting and you think, I don't want to come to the welcome meeting because I know they're going to give me some old crappy, what they call a, cock a welcome cocktail, which looks like some kind of radioactive washing up water with an umbrella in it. And then they do the big sell on all the, you know, all the different trips that you can do, you know, to local monasteries and you better book up quick because they sell out really quickly. <laughs> no. <laughs>
I remember at one of them she said, now make sure you keep out the sun because it's very hot. And I thought, oh, you know, I'm a bloody grown-up. I think I have some notion of this. But then I got me bloody legs sunburned the next day. So I hadn't been listening. I'd been too busy sort of grumbling in the corner and not really paying attention. Holiday reps, I think, think that the job is going to be more fun than it actually is. And their, their whole lives are spoiled by people um, asking them to do things. Whenever anything goes wrong and you want to complain, you can never find the rep. There's always a sign-up. They've always got these desks. And you go to the desk and it says, the rep will be here between 12 and 10 past 12 on a Thursday in November. Get to breakfast and the international buffet is in full swing. The way it works with buffets is you've paid for it, so you'll eat it, and then you'll eat some more. You don't even like sausages for breakfast, but somehow you helped yourself to 12 of them. I think one of the problems about English current obesity is the rise of the holiday because English people have gone abroad, they pay for everything in advance, and there is a buffet. I can't help but think, it's free, I'm just going to have as much as I can fit on. So it's like, uh, oh, the fried breakfast, yeah, I'll have um, uh, yeah, three fried eggs, I think, and seven rashes of bacon. There are two or three enormous, generous jugs of fruit juice, and then dozens of tiny, tiny little, little glasses, no bigger than thimbles. Well, what I always do, even if I don't want much orange juice, I make a point of refilling my thimble 27 times just to show the hotel that they can't make me drink less juice by having smaller glasses. You've eaten enough for the whole week, but then you go and help yourself to some more. With Half Board, the idea is to eke out the hotel food for the whole day, buck the system and get yourself a free packed lunch, sneak it away when no one's looking into the beach bag for later. They try to prevent it with their pointless and tragic signs telling you not to take food from the restaurant. No one takes any notice at all. Some people take so much they're probably flogging it on the beach, open to stall. Breakfast buffets are meant to have things sneaked out of. I mean, I think that's why you have either a handbag with you or pockets in your shorts. And so you, you walk out like a gunslinger, very nonchalantly. If you're on half board in a posh hotel and there's a bit of a fancy old breakfast cart going on, you need all the croissants you can get, frankly, all the pain au chocolat, um, all the yoghurt, especially if you've got kids, because that's lunch taken care of, isn't it, really? And you find yourself putting bread rolls and bananas and, and bits of cheese in the beach bag. And I tell you, I was like, you know, pull yourself together. This, you don't even eat this stuff when it's there looking nice on a plate. I, do you seriously think in four hours' time when you're on a beach and it's got bits of sand stuck to it that your kids are, are going to eat that? I know a multi-millionaire does this. He takes the food from the breakfast buffet and he takes some yogurts from the breakfast buffet and he has them in his room on the terrace for lunch. So he gets lunch free, as it were. This is at Sandy Lane, you know, where it's £3,000 for a sweet. And he's doing this to save Tuppence Hatney. That's the spirit. Can't pull the wool over our eyes. Won't find us spending £3 on a tiny bottle of mineral water from the minibar when we can save money and lug a tonne of it back to our room from the local supermarket. And don't think lolling by the pool is going to be a doddle. 500 guests and only 100 sun loungers to go round, which is a recipe for international incidents for the week ahead. You can't just go and sprawl on a lounger when the mood takes you for some reason. You have to be in possession of it all day. And if you're stupid enough to have a lie-in, you've had it. Miss the boat. By 8.30, all the other clever clog nations have already set up base camp. Bags it the lot. There is this rather old-fashioned racist cliché that the Germans put their towels on the, uh, on the sun loungers and grab the best spots. And it's true, <laughs> they do. You go there and you think, I can't believe this is actually, this is like a Bob Monkhouse joke that is, uh, you know, I'm living through, but they really do. The places I've been, like sort of Tunisia or, you know, Spain, there's, there's, you get there and there's all these towels laid out and, you know, the territory has been occupied. I think the Germans they get a bad press. I've got nothing against the Germans, and I think if they get there first, good for them. If you wanted it, you should have got up earlier. <laughs>